Good morning. Good to see you today. You're my heroes. You made it through the, the uh, you know, the ice or whatever you had to battle. So glad that you're here. I suspect there's some extra people online today, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're joining us. You're certainly welcome. We're glad to have you, whether you're virtual and digital or whether you're here physically. You know, this past, uh, we always start our, whatever new year we have, with prayer, with prayer and fasting. So this past 21 days of prayer and fasting have been um, uh, challenging. Uh, has been good though, right? I mean, it's been it's been good for me. One of the I was fasting sugar and meat, two things that I love that, uh, that definitely uh, had their grips in me. So I thought, you know, let's see how that goes. Well, it was tough this last few days. Like everything I saw on TV, I just like dialed in. Even it was like an Arby's. We've got the meat. I'm just like, you do have the meat since it's what I want. You know, <laughs> TikTok, you know, they were on to me, man. Just slices of meat with people like, mmm, so good. You know, and of course I added in and you can't have any, you know. So, so anyways, I'm, and, you know, some of that stuff's good to just kind of, you know, distance yourself. It's got too much of a grip. Some of you, you might be tempted to think, hey, I am done, I'm going full on. But you know, sometimes uh, we kind of realign ourselves and, 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 and maybe just bring, bring back those things we fasted in moderation. And that might be something that would be uh, helpful. And so that's something I certainly uh, want to do as well. Well, we're doing this series that we started a few weeks ago called It's Time. It's Time. And really what we're saying is it's time to do what God wants us to do. You know, I mean, especially since in light of the last two years, uh, we've been told it's not time. It's time to hide. It's time to be afraid. It's time to, you know, close to yourself off. And uh, I believe this is the year when God's going to do some amazing things uh, in your life, but also in the life of this church. Now, if that's going to happen, it's going to take more than just you. God does things in systems, in families. And the, the Greek word is oikos. In other words, there's, there's a group. It's, God does things in, in, uh, with a community. Even though in our country, particularly, we, we celebrate independence, right? It's all about, you know, the hero is the person who can do it all by themselves, right? And, you know, the, the lone ranger, you know, Rambo is, I don't know, he's kind of outdated, right? Maybe it's John Wick. You know, all he needs is his dog, and that was taken from him. And now, you know, he's like, he's off the chain, you know. So, but honestly, we need, we need community. God places us in communities. We're not, we don't, in the Bible, it doesn't celebrate independence. It celebrates interdependence because God wired us. We're hardwired to want to belong and to be part of a community. So the Bible says, since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other. And each of us needs all the others. So what he's saying is this community is not optional. It's something that God designed in order to help us fulfill our purpose. We can't really... Fo- so we talk here in, in Vineyard, our vision is for people to know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, make a difference. You can't do that until you are part of a community. It's not a solo run. We do this together. So let's look about today about how do we accomplish God's purpose for our life? Well, three things. One of them is, is we need to connect. I connect with others so they can walk with me. I need others to walk with me. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about growing spiritually when I talk about walking, because that's actually a biblical, that's the way the Bible uses that term. I mean, certainly just, you know, 
people walked around physically, but there's a walk that we have spiritually. Look at what the Bible says. This is one of many verses, by the way. Just as you received Christ Jesus, the Lord, he says, so walk in him. And so there's this comparison. I actually like walking because walking is certainly easier than running. Yeah. And it's a better, it's a better connection. I mean, our, what we, if you've got to go a long way, uh, you can walk farther than you can run. And, uh, and most of us can walk. And so walking is, 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 is part of this journey. So we're on a spiritual journey. And instead of being still, we have to get in our mind, we need, we're on a journey and we walk. And here's, here's a couple of verses. It talks about walking in wisdom, walking in love, walk in the light, walk in obedience, walking in the spirit, walk as Jesus walked. What, what's it talking about? Well, you were never meant to walk through this life alone. We do it together as a community, as a community. Now, when we talk about being together as a community in relationship, we're not talking about whether you're married or not. Sometimes we talk about that and people think, oh, well, I'm not married and I need to get married or I'm married, I've got, I'm good to go. When we've done surveys in our church, we actually, the demographics of this church, we have more singles than people that are married. Hey, that's great. Because this, and it's not, and we have many, many singles in our church are in vibrant, deep, loving, intimate relationships with other people. We also have married people that are, that are isolated, are lonely, are depressed, that are disconnected. See, being married or not has nothing to do with what God's talking about when he talks about being in community. Because marriage, sometimes people get married thinking that that solves it, and they end up very, very disappointed because actually marriage doesn't solve the issue of community. That's something you have to initiate and it's something that you do when you do things together. Have you ever heard that song? It's an older song, Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. I love some of the lyrics in there because it describes this so well. It says, I, walked, I, I walk a lonely road, the only one that I've ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's only me and I walk alone. Some of you, that's your song. You say, those are my lyrics. But it's only me, and I walk alone. I walk this empty street on the boulevard of broken dreams, which is where that road leads. My shadow's the only one that walks beside me. That's kind of sad. It's just me and my shadow. I don't even have a dog. You know, it's me and my shadow. My, sh- my, my shallow heart's the only thing that's beating. Sometimes I wish someone out there will find me till then... I walk alone. That's a sad story when it's just you and your shadow, right? Just me and my shadow. I think down deep we know that we need more than our shadow. In fact, kids, you know, when they're little, they discover their shadow at some point. And they realize that's my, and it's actually scary for a lot of kids. Like, whoa, it's, this isn't right, you know? So I, I grabbed a couple of those clips from YouTube of kids discovering their shadow and they don't, they like freak out. Watch this. That's your shadow. That's your shadow. <laughs> That's your shadow. <laughs> <laughs> See? Teddy. Are you scared of your shadow? That's your shadow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's something, there's something in, in bread in us. That, hey, we need more than this. This isn't good, you know? And so when we're left that alone, where we don't have other people. And, you know, this last two years, we've, we've for the most part, have, have had to retreat from community, from connecting with people. 
And so we need more than that. So what's wrong with walking alone? Well, the Bible talks a lot about being careful about that because one, of, one is, is it's safer when we're with other people. It's less risky. I think we know that. I mean, if you've ever been in a, in, in, in a city that you've not been to before, it's dark, you're traveling, and uh, maybe you're walking down a street, it's not well lit. Down deep, you can, hey, I shouldn't, be, you know, I, I shouldn't be alone right now. It's not safe. And that's true in life. We need other people because it's safer. It's also more supportive. A few years ago, Sharon and I took a road trip up uh, in California, through northern California, went and saw the Redwood Forest. It's amazing. If you've, if you've been there, just these huge trees. I mean, they're 300, 350 feet in the air, 30 feet wide. These monster trees, but their roots only go down like 12 feet like 6 to 12 feet, but they go out 60 to 80 feet horizontally, and they interconnect. And so when winds come, when storms come, they don't fall down. These skyscraper trees, even though their roots are so shallow because they're connected in with other trees. That's a, that's a great illustration of what it means when we're in community. When difficulties come uh, in our lives, we have the support network of other people. It's also smarter. When we go through life together, all of us are smarter than some of us, and certainly smarter than one of us. The Bible says only fools would trust what they alone think. You know, we're, when we're all by ourselves and nobody challenges our thoughts, and where we're at, nobody uh, champions, you know, hey, helps us to have new insight, we're going to end up foolish. It says without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow the better your chances. And so there's wisdom there. W wisdom in other people's counsel and other people's insight. It also teaches us to get along, to cooperate. The things that we were, that we were supposed to start learning in kindergarten, you know, most of us are, you know, we're still learning those things. And, and when we're in a community with other people, it helps us to grow in that area. It says, it is not good for man to be alone. In other words, God created us to be in community. Now, God actually created two types of community, two groups. One is a physical family, and another is our spiritual family. The physical family is the one we grew up in. The spiritual family is the one that you'll have for the rest of your life. It's the one that goes into eternity. The physical family, often when they, when they grow up, they move out, maybe move away, eventually they die, the spiritual family we have forever. And God uses the spiritual family to, you go, what's God up to today? He's changing the world through his family. That's what he does. So if we want to make a difference, it's about getting on the same page with what God's doing and being part of his spiritual family. The Bible says, this is not the time. Now this series is, it's time. But he's saying, no, it's not time. Well, what is it not time for? Well, to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have had uh, the habit of doing, you could add, for the past two years. See, it starts out with good intentions. We're actually told by the medical professionals and, and uh, politicians. They say, hey, this is what you need to do. Don't be around people. And, uh, hey, Zoom might work for work. But Zoom and, and video conferencing, that's got limit, significant limitations for being in community, as the Bible talks about it. And so it says, that's, that's when it's not time. He goes, but it is time now. He goes, finishing this verse, he says, because we need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage each other onward. We need one another. Now, this verse was written back when there was persecution from the Roman emperors. And so they had Caligula, they had Claudius, they had Nero. Our persecution is Alpha, Delta, Omicron. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's a persecution of, the, of, of our faith. If we're not careful, we can fall into the habit of, because they had, they, had the, they had good reasons. I mean, Caligula, they were, he was out to kill Christians. And so they hid. And in their hiding, they ended up no, no longer meeting. They didn't have video conferences. They didn't have Zoom. 
But they, at some point, had to say, I'm going to risk take. It's not like it was safe now. It was like, we need to be in community. This is important. Because isolated, we end up with anxiety, with depression, with temptation that overcomes us, with cynicism, all kinds of things. God's answer to is community. It, and it over, helps us overcome loneliness. Loneliness. Now, we all put on a good face, right? We all, I mean, if you were to look, come on a Sunday morning and look at everybody, you think, wow, this church, there's no lonely people here. That's because we're all good at wearing masks, right? We know how to put on our, our anti-loneliness mask. You know, I, it's not me. I said, me, Lily, never. Listen, loneliness goes back as a struggle for Christians, especially when they get out of the habit of meeting together for 2,000 years. We are not the only ones struggling with it. And so that should be help. I want to say that as a form of encouragement. You're not alone, but you're also not the only one who's been told how to move out of that place. The truth is, you need, and I need, other people to grow. We don't do it on our own. We need one another. And even though we might have lofty goals, I hope you set goals. I think they're great. But often, you know, our goals that we set are like achievement-oriented. But God is all about relationships. That's way more important than achievement. You can achieve all kinds of things, but God is interested in us growing. That's why the first two commandments, the most important commandments, are loving God, loving people. Letting God help you to love people. That's relational. That's important to God. And the two greatest lessons in life are all about relationships. When you gather, each one of you should be prepared with something useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight, take your turn with no one person taking over. That way you all learn from each other. So here is this template of community that he says, this is helps us as we learn to grow together. But that doesn't happen on a Sunday morning, just like it didn't happen in the temple courts. In the early church, they said they met weekly in the temple courts. They also met daily from home to home. This is what happens when we are in small groups. That's the power of a small group. We all take turns encouraging one another, using one another's giftings and, and hey, God showed me something and I have an encouragement for you and how can I pray for you? And here's a poem God, God gave me. Something powerful happens when we do that. The second thing that we do if we're going to fulfill God's purpose in our life is, is we protect one another. We, so we connect, we protect. I need others to watch out for me. We, we need other people. Now, we've been a, talking about protection the last two years with with uh, the coronavirus, right? I mean, masking certainly was part of it. I have all kinds of masks still, right? I have my, I have my mask, like I'm flying out tomorrow, so I've got my airplane mask, right? Yeah, I mean, because if you have a valve on it, they won't let you on the airplane, you know? And, and then I've got my mask that I like to wear if I need, if I'm, you know, here in, in Sunday morning because it doesn't, it doesn't catch on my mic. And then I've got another mask that I've got if I know I'm going to be having to wear my mask for a long time. I can breathe easier. I mean, am I speaking your language? You got, you got more than one mask, right? And we're all about, you know, and washing our hands and getting the vaccine and, and contact testing and quarantine. We're, are you that savvy? On, so that's your, your, your protection for your physical self. Are you that savvy on your spiritual self about protecting your spirit, protecting your soul? That, the Bible says, is more important than your physical body. Your physical body is important. I'm not saying it's not important. It's just more important to protect your spiritual body. And so we need to be thinking like that. Like, hey, I need to stay on track. What am I going to do to protect myself? Especially the blind spots. We all have blind spots, right? <coughs> we certainly do. The Bible says, look out. And that's counterculture. Look out for one another's interests, not just your own. Our culture is all about looking out for ourselves. He says, look out for other people. Is anybody looking out for you? Have you pos postured yourself, positioned yourself in community where people can speak into you and speak into your life and say, hey, you know, 
You need some help there. You know, I mean, we all, if I have a, if, if my car, if my taillight goes out, how am I going to know? If you don't tell me, I want you to tell, I don't want a cop telling me. I want you telling me, right? Just pull up next to me. Hey, Pastor Andy, your, your, your taillight's out. How am I going to know if I'm talking to you and I just ate a taco and I've got taco in my teeth? You know, you got to let me know, right? Or if, if uh, my zipper's down. Don't let me speak the whole time and everything. thinking, oh, that's so embarrassing. If you only knew, I give you permission. Stand up, say something. Hey, we'll wait. Go take care of that. You got yourself an issue there. See, we, we, I need your help. There's things I can't see in my own life. But you see it. And I want you to speak into my life. And vice versa. We need one another. That's what he's talking about here. As we grow together. The Bible says, keep being concerned about each other as the Lord's followers should. You see, in nine, at 9-11, we discovered, wow, there's some people that hate us. And, you know, terrorists that want to hurt us, kill us. And so we've been more vigilant about, you know, about at airport security and security in churches and all that. And that's important and that's good. But, you know, there's, a, there's an enemy that wants to hurt you worse than the worst terrorist on earth. That's Satan. Satan, you go, what does he look like? Is he like, does he dress in red with a tail and a pitchfork and goes around boo? No. No, he, he, he looks like strife and conflict and loneliness and discouragement and defeat. He looks like habits that have gotten out of control and you can't control it anymore. He looks like isolation. And then whispers, that's the right thing. You stay isolated. Don't let other people know. Satan loves to say, when you're on one side of temptation, he goes, nobody will know. And then once you do it, he goes, somebody will find out. Satan is out to destroy you and hurt you. And so we need, to, we need one another. We need, the sad truth is, most Christians live a life of defeat. And they don't even know why. Or they're just in a place of defeat and they've been there so long, they just figure that's their lot in life. That is not your lot in life. That is part of that lie that comes from the enemy. You'll never do any better than that. You're broken good. You're, 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 you know, you're, you're broken. You're no good. You don't fight it on your own. We need one another. It says a, sta- a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are what? Even better. And three, for me, that's a small group. Two, I'm going, I don't know. Three, small group is in session. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Let me ask you a question. Two questions. Is anybody watching your backside? Is anybody watching out for your spiritual welfare? You have to be intentional about this. It doesn't happen automatically. That's why we have small groups. That's why we do our vineyard network three times a year and have our semester sign-ups and say, this is the moment. This is it. And I can guarantee you there is a back pressure that is trying to keep you from signing up. I just want you to be aware of that. It's not just you. Not you and your busy schedule. There is a spiritual pushback. Because if you take a step and say, I'm going to be part of a small group. Satan knows that he's losing you. Of course, God knows he's gaining you and he can do something in your life. Community is God's answer not only to loneliness, but also to defeat. It says, if one person falls, another can reach out and help him. But people who are alone when they fall, they're in real trouble. They're in real trouble. Some of you, you're in real trouble. And you've been wondering. You've, some of you have even been praying. How do I get out of, from where I'm at? I am here to tell you that God has commu- He's given you a community. People that will help you. You don't have to be alone when you're in trouble. There's people that can reach out and help you. 
Now, if you're going to achieve God's purpose in your life, not only do you connect, protect, but also grow. I need others to spur me on. Other people, they help us. They, they encourage us. They challenge us. They goad us. Whatever we need to move forward says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. So do you have somebody who can spur you on, encourage you? Most of us have people in our lives that can tear us down, pull us down, throw water on the fire, try to pop the balloon of our dream. There's plenty of those people around. How many people do you have that are champions for your growth, your spiritual growth, and going to spur you on, take your next step? You can do it. I don't know what my next step is. Well, I'll be praying for you. Have you ever thought of, you know, and then maybe they, you share and, and, and they tell you about their next step. For some of you, your next step is taking a step into Christ and saying, yes, I want Christ into my life. What does that mean? Well, because we were separated, all of us, all of humanity is separated from God through sin. God came up with a plan. Man's plan is religion. Oh, I just get religious. Well, I just start trying to be good. God's plan was Christ. I'll send my son, Jesus Christ. He will live the life that nobody else lived. He'll die for the sins. He'll pay the penalty that he didn't deserve. It's what we deserved. And then we, and when we put our faith in Christ, all of that's been paid for. It's been done. And so we just live in the, this new life in Christ because of what, Christ, what, what God did for us. That's your next step. Some of you have taken that step, but your next step is to get involved in a small group. Maybe you used to be part of a small group. Trust. Check it out again. I was looking at small groups this morning, kind of looking at them, going, man, look at all these cool small groups. They're great. It reminded me of when I, my first day at college, when I, when I looked at the syllabus and I wanted to take all the classes. That only lasted a semester. Then I'm thinking, <laughs> when's it all over? <laughs> but I was looking at so many cool groups. We have all kinds of groups. Go on and, 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 and look at them. Vineyardchurch.com. And that's some of you, that's your next step. Some of it, you, your next step is growth track. You haven't gotten involved in growth track. And we encourage you right after the service. We do it after every service. Step one, first Sunday of the month. Step two, second Sunday of the month. We're committed to help you take your next step. Some of you, it's being generous. Some of you, it's getting baptized. Some of you, it's getting in a freedom group. Community is God's answer to loneliness, defeat, and discouragement. And discouragement. Sometimes it's so hard to get out of this place of discouragement. Because we feel so, that's an isolating feeling all by itself. You don't have to do it alone. In fact, you can't really get out of it alone. It takes the community that God's given us. He says, let us not neglect doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. For some of you, God's word to you is, is just don't give up. Stay in there. Hang in there. Don't throw in the towel. You take your next step. You go for it. Do it now. That's what God's saying to some of you. Do it now. I'm here to spur you on. Get in the game. Be part of a small group. I think God's telling some of you, don't do it. There's things you're doing that you have no business being part of. You've got to clear that out of your life. That's part of why we did 21 days of prayer and fasting. Some of us, we had things, they were hooks in our lives that, that we needed out of our lives. Maybe you didn't fast that, but this is your time where God's saying, you know what? The last 21 days is to kind of build you up because this is really what I wanted to work on. You need to end that. Stop doing that. It's getting in the way of my relationship with you. That's what God's saying to some of you. Some of you, God is saying, take the risk. Maybe you're not a risk taker. Maybe you're more conservative by nature. That's why it's risk taking. I mean, it's, 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 that's why it feels so awkward and hard. But God's saying that is what faith is all about. Taking a risk. God's speaking to some of you saying, apologize now. Apologize now. And whenever we talk about asking for forgiveness, apologizing, 
We have all, we, we, we're all experts at having reasons why we don't need to do it. Oh, I, don't, I don't need to do that. I don't need to be rejected. It was their fault anyways. All kinds of things that come into our minds. But listen, if, if that's hanging on in your life, it's clogging up something that God wants to unlock. And so apologize now. Do something. You step out. You begin building that bridge if possible. God's speaking to some of you to say, get help. It's way beyond just a behavior. And really even this habit is now an addiction. You need to do something about that. This is your year. It's time. Get help. God saying to some of you, slow down. If you're burning the candle at both ends, you're not as bright as you think you are. I mean, we just need to slow down. So the things, the, the speed and the tempo, the way you got to where you are today will not get you the next place. Some of you, you need to slow down and contemplate, think about, God's got a new season for you. And sometimes we just stay busy because we don't want to think about what God has for us. Pray about it. Move towards that. Open up that place in our lives. You have a next step. Some of you, your next step is attending regularly here at, at church or at a church, but attending, getting involved in growth track, getting involved in a small group, coming to our first Wednesdays, which we will be beginning uh, the first Wednesday in March, which kicks off Lent. And so we'll have a Lent service. And when you come, we're going to have all our pastors here. You'll get prayed for by a pastor. And we're going to actually kick off that Wednesday because that's Ash Wednesday. And then from then on, we're going to have our first Wednesday services where we have extended worship, deep teaching, where we have uh, soaking prayer. We'll have communion every, every, every time we come together. We're going to have some, some incredible kids' ministries, thematic kids' ministries. In the summer, we're going to have after parties. I mean, we're pulling out all the stops. In fact, we've asked all our small groups during that week, every month, to not meet other than our freedom groups because those... Uh, the, what's happening there is just too important. But, but we're, and our, all our smaller groups are going to be there. We want you to plan on being there. Plan on being there. Also, you know, a next step for some of you, particularly if you're married, regardless of whether your marriage you're saying is good or not, is investing in your marriage, which is why we're doing our marriage conference. It's our first, we've done marriage things before, but we're going to do an annual marriage conference. And so we want you to be there. There is a nominal fee, but as like anything in our church, anything we do, money is never the reason not to be part of it. Just let us know. We'll make sure and get you there. We have scholarships. We have no problem getting you there. We want you there. It is important. It is worth investing into. Well, let's summarize what we talked about. We need each other. Why? To connect, protect, and to grow. Connect because I need other people to walk with me. Protect because I need other people to watch out for me. And grow, I need other people to spur me on. And you need that as well. 2022, Vineyard Network, that's what we're doing. Launching this week, our Vineyard Network, our small groups. It's going to go for 13 weeks from January 30th to April 30th. All of our small groups fit under one of these seven categories. Students, we have students, small groups, marriage, uh, women, men, prayer, Freedom Outreach. And the way that you get involved is go on to our website, vineyardchurch.com. Very easy. And there you'll see Vineyard Network. You click there and you can uh, reach out, talk to, uh, choose. A, my suggestion is choose more than one. Reach out to two or three. And uh, don't just show up. Call them up so that you get the details or, or email them or whatever they've provided. And then, and then go visit them. So it might take you two or three weeks to find the right group. You just show up to, hey, I'm just, I'm just checking you guys out, seeing if this is a good fit for me. And uh, all our leaders, they're, they're good with that. We've already talked to them, you know, and uh, they'll, hey, that's great. We'll be praying for you. And then get ready for the best year of your life. Get involved. It is time. It's time. It's time. Let's bow our heads and pray. If you would, if you would, just close your eyes and bow your heads. Don't worry about the person next to you. This is your moment with God. 
I'm just going to take two or three minutes. I'll lead you in prayer. Would you say, God, thank you for your word of encouragement. That you love me. That you care about my spirit, about my soul. Some of you are struggling with loneliness, with discouragement, with defeat. If you were to just take a, an internal temperature check right now, just be real honest. You know, that's me. God is calling you to resolve that, to really take your next step. Why not say, God, help me out of that place of loneliness, of discouragement, of defeat. Help me, God, to find a place where I can connect, where I can be protected, and where I can grow. You know, an appropriate thing to do right now, just between you and God, if you have tried to do this on your own, you have that independent streak that says, I'm doing this on my own. I'm I don't need other people. That is not God's path. That's not God's plan for you. So I would encourage you to ask for forgiveness. Just right now, say, God, forgive me for trying to do it on my own. I need, I need the body of Christ. I need other people in my life. Now, you're, some of you, your next step, your next step, is to ask Christ into your life, to say, God, I receive Christ. What Jesus did on the cross. Say, God, you hung, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, he hung on the cross so that I don't have to try to earn my way to get your favor. All I do is put my faith in Jesus. And the resurrection power, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, that we celebrate on Easter, that power God gives to you. That's the only way you can live a life that we're talking about. It's not about religion. It's about letting Christ's resurrection power free you and give you that, that hope, that joy, the sense of purpose that comes from Christ. If you've never asked Christ into your life, or maybe it's been a long time, you know you're distant from God, then I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Right now, with every eye closed, every head bowed, if you're joining us online, you participate as well. This isn't about joining Vineyard, and I'm not going to have you come forward or stand up, but I want you to let me know I'm ready. It's time for me. This year, I want this year to be a year where I have God in my life. He's, folk, he's front and center. And so I want to pray with you. If that's you, and this is a, a point of just right now, with boldness, just let me know by just slipping your hand up, saying, I want to pray with you. And I'll lead you in prayer, right where you're at, if you would. Bless you. Okay, yep, I see you in the back. Anybody else? Hey, this is your, some of you, you're struggling right now. Keep your hand up, if you would. This is your moment. Don't let it go. God wants to do something in your life. There you go. Yep. I see that. Okay, put your hands down. Pray after me right where you're at. You can think it. You can whisper it, whatever you want. And it's not too late. If you didn't raise your hand, pray with me. If that's on your heart, say, dear God, today, it's time for me. I put my faith in Christ and what he did on the cross. Forgive me, God, for doing things my own way. Give me a fresh start. Let this be the best year of my life, 2022. Would you say, God, give me the strength and the power to live the life you call me to live. Give me a clear conscience. Release me from the guilt and the shame of the past. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you congratulate those who prayed that prayer with me? Thank you for...
Thank you for coming and coming alongside with us and joining us on our journey as we seek the Lord and just put Him first in our lives. Here's some ways that you can do that. I'd love to pray for you and to know uh, if you prayed that prayer with me, let me know about it. You can do that by putting your, uh, uh, getting the QR code on the screen or the connect card. There's also a way you can write any prayer requests that you have. It's also a way that you can uh, tell us about your experience here at Vineyard. Uh, that QR code is the way we're going. As you can see, we, we started this year. We're, we're going to start leaning into that more and more. And uh, that's a great way to stay connected with us. Uh, well, you can also uh, invest in what we're doing here as we help people to know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference financially if you'd like to. And so there's a way for you to do that as well, texting, uh, a financial gift that way, or some other ways that we've provided. But we're going to close on a final song. Uh, let me transition in prayer. Would you stand with me? Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, your wisdom is above our wisdom. We recognize we need you. We need the community of faith that you've put in our midst. Help us, Lord, to take risks, to step out, to say no when we need to say no and to say yes when we need to say yes. Lord, we want to pursue you. We want this year to be the year you are our primary focus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.